Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tambini. Uh, Mr. President, uh, distinguished guests, and members of the uh, directing council, colleagues, and friends. I should say that uh, this is a great honor for me to be asked actually to speak to you all. And I thank you for asking me to join with you today in providing some opening remarks to provide a somewhat of a perspective on the occasion of a commemorative event, an opportunity to reflect on a remarkable past and to look ahead to some even brighter futures. It was 30 years ago that the WHO Special Global Commission met to uh, review the final comprehensive reports about smallpox provided by countries throughout the world. 22 different international committees had visited some 79 countries to confirm that the absence of smallpox. The commission reported to Director General Ken Doe and the assembly that it was confident that smallpox had been eradicated and that no cases had occurred anywhere in the world for more than two years. The assembly approved the commission's report and advised that smallpox or vaccination everywhere could stop. Never before had a disease been eradicated. Mankind was at last uh, free of a surge that had maimed, blinded, and killed uh, since the dawn of written history. Unless we forget, this was a disease more feared than any of the great pestilences, whether it's yellow fever or plague or cholera, this was more serious. The earliest records of smallpox go actually go back more than 3,500 years in uh, the form of Egyptian mummies, who, uh, people who died in the acute phase of smallpox and still have evidence of the pustules with the disease from which they died. During the subsequent millennia, smallpox relentlessly spread from person to person, from country to country, in every climate, in every season of the year. In many traditional cultures, China, Japan, India, West Africa, smallpox gods and goddesses were worshiped. In fact, it is the only disease that has played such an important role in the lives of people that deities and temples were especially created. It was no less lethal in the 20th century. During that century, we estimate more than 300 million died, twice the number that actually died directly or indirectly as a cause of war during that period. And indeed, until the proclamation of eradication, countries were so, fear, so feared smallpox that most of you, I will, re you will remember that uh, you carried around a yellow vaccination certificate ensuring that you'd been vaccinated successfully in the preceding three years. The scope of the smallpox program was unique. I think we forget this. It required the cooperation of all countries and the active participation of more than 50. It required a universal effort unlike any that mankind had ever undertaken. National uh, antipathies were set aside. And even though they, through the darkest days of the Cold War, the Soviet Union and the United States worked in full cooperation and collaboration. It was a no less a challenge to WHO. It required new leadership capacities and an ability to sustain the confidence of member countries over a period of a number of years until eradication could be achieved. The program changed the lives and careers of many national and international staff who participated, and I was one of those. It was transforming to witness how much could be achieved, how inexpensively, and how rapidly in controlling smallpox, and to see what a difference it made to communities. 
Surprisingly, the few added, few added resources were required. The addition of a comparatively small number of health staff plus vehicles, supplies of a protective vaccine, the formula for success was a simple but well-supervised mass vaccination campaign and the establishment of a surveillance system that would quickly discover cases and would permit outbreaks to be controlled. The eradication effort in 20 countries of West Africa was among the earliest successes. That area included some of the countries with the least satisfactory infrastructure and communication, uh, but nevertheless, the last case was re registered only three years and five months after the program began. It was a dramatic demonstration of the potential and the effective effectiveness of the smallpox strategy. In fact, more than 100 million people became smallpox free as the work of primarily the national directors and staff and just 50 international advisors from CDC. In April 1971, the last case of smallpox in the Americas was detected where? In Rio de Janeiro. Not out in the distant jungles, but in Rio de Janeiro itself. Two years later, an international committee certified the whole of the Western Hemisphere to be smallpox free. This was the first major geographic area to be able to be so certified. The achievements provided courage to health authorities everywhere to pursue, pursue the ambitious goal of eradicating smallpox in just 10 years. However, there were countless obstacles and they thre regularly threatened success. We had civil wars, floods, famines, refugees, shortages of vaccine and funds. We had bureaucracies, unbelievable, and needless to say, lots of red tape. On one, more than one occasion, the ultimate outcome uh, hung in the balance. The eradication goal of 10 years was missed, but by only nine months and 26 days. During the program, many field staff, st stimulated and intrigued by the potential for public health, saw new opportunities and many altered their own career plans. Their subsequent achievements, both nationally and internationally, have been extraordinary. A number of them are with us today, including Dr. De Quadros. In the course of the program, new operational tools and methods were perfected, one of the most valuable being the development of surveillance networks to provide weekly reports of cases from all health units. And the data were invaluable for measuring progress and charting strategy. Equally important, the program catalyzed a new era during which interest in vaccination for disease prevention grew rapidly. When smallpox eradication began in 1967, vaccines were actually not widely available or used outside of the industrialized countries. When epidemic smallpox occurred, there were mass campaigns which flared and then went out and stopped again. A few countries administered yellow fever vaccine, some BCG, some DPT. However, there was no established program for any vaccine in any country that was intended to extend throughout the whole of a country and to vaccinate all citizens. This was unique. It called for the systematic monitored vaccination program extending throughout the endemic countries with an effort to reach at least 80% of the uh, populations. In most, almost all areas, vaccination was well accepted. It was welcomed, even in areas where vaccination was a totally unknown concept. Where local political authorities, teachers, and religious leaders provided support, a health worker could readily vaccinate 500 people a day. Well, the question naturally arose, why not administer other vaccines? 
And so Latin American health staff uh, earlier in cooperation with CDC had previously done a number of studies of uh, demonstrating that several vaccines could be given simultaneously with safety and with efficacy. And therefore, in December 1970, WHO convened a group of national leaders here in this room to consider a new course of action. They endorsed the creation of dedicated vaccination programs using such as mobile teams or other mechanisms that would undertake national programs that would in, uh, reach out to people everywhere. And that would include, in addition to smallpox vaccine, DPT, the diphtheria pertussis tetanus vaccine, polio, and measles. And thus the name, the pro expanded program on immunization, EPI. Now, we could have had a sexier name, this war on disease or something like that, but at that time, we weren't thinking ahead. And this proved to be a beginning of a marked transformation of interest in vaccine programs. In fact, some have pre uh, referred to this as the beginning of the vaccine era. The World Health Assembly approved the EPI initiative. UNICEF sub subsequently accepted the program as a priority. Rotary International agreed to provide uh, oral polio vaccine. A goal was set to vaccinate or reach 80% of children by 1990. To many, this seemed unduly ambitious, but surprisingly, the goal was met. Other vaccines have now been incorporated for administration in populations with, uh, <coughs> in a number of countries, including hepatitis B vaccine, rubella, mumps, rotavirus, homophilus influenzae, and others are looming. And pioneering in these new efforts have been very clearly the countries of the Americas. At the 1985 meeting of this directing council, it was decided to eliminate polio from the Americas within five years. It was an ambitious target. Many doubted that it could be done, but the goal was reached. Meanwhile, the strategies and methods for polio eradication, as developed here in the Americas, began to be applied, essentially unchanged, in a global eradication effort. And thus, the begin, we <laughs> began the new era, which we celebrate here as well, an era during which vaccines have grown in number and efforts are made to assure vaccine production, uh, protection for all citizens, however remote their residence, however poor they may be. Tens of millions have been spared death and disability. Polio is nearing global eradication, and here in the Americas, as you've heard, measles transmission has been stopped. Rubella would appear to be very near the end as well. But I am regularly surprised to learn that few today appreciate the fact that it was here in the Americas that most of these new approaches and developments originated and their effectiveness demonstrated. It is due time that we salute the imagination, the vision, and creativity of you, the health leadership of the countries of the Americas and your staffs who have made this possible, and to pay special tribute to the contribution of Dr. Ciro de Quadros, as we've just done, and his staff, plus PAHO Regional Directors, Dr. Carlisle Macedo, Georgia Lane, and Myrta Rosas, who have been staunch supporters of this effort, even in, some time, in times when there was doubt. Thank you all. Thank you.